Floss Tube. This is Sandy and this is my channel, Stitching with Sandy. My channel is all about cross stitch and sometimes I throw in a few crafts that I do here and there. So if that's not what you're interested in, then you can go on to the next video on, on YouTube. Otherwise, if you're here for the stitching, I'm happy that you're here. Um, today is July 16th, 2023, Sunday afternoon. Um, for those who don't know, I live in Southern California and right now our temperatures are 104 and climbing. Um, we were all so excited um, that summer's been so enjoyable, not too hot, and then this week they decided to make a change. I guess we're in a heat dome, um, according to the news, but so we're inside just stitching, enjoying ourselves. So I, my life updates are kind of short. I don't have a lot going on. Being off of school gives me the freedom to just pretty much do whatever I want or go wherever I want. So that's what I've been doing. So mostly stitching, stitching, stitching. Um, my group of friends, we were supposed to go to Las Vegas for a stitching um, getaway shopping trip and we decided to postpone it till later. And so we spent time together. We um, go out to Scones on Monday. We had a luncheon where we all did a potluck at one of our friends and stitched. And then we, um, we visited a new store, which I'm gonna tell you about. Um, the new store is called Grand Country Quilts. And I'm super excited about it because they are going to carry cross stitch. Actually, they already are, and I wanna share that with you. So that's part of my life update. So let's go ahead and go through the store. I also have something else to share with you afterwards, and then we'll get to my um, what I've been working on. So Grand Country Quilts is located in San Marcos, California, and they have two shops in the same shopping mall. So the first shop is their primitive quilt store, and they have classes and all kinds of wonderful things to do there, beautiful fabrics, a lot of little um, doodads that you can buy, like pin cushions and decorations for your home. Um, it's beautiful. But they just recently opened another, at the other end of the shopping mall, another um, add-on to their quilt shop, and this is more modern quilts and cross-stitch. And so I am going to um, insert a video. At the end of the video, there will be the business card for Grand Country Quilts, and um, I left it at the end so that you can try and follow the link from the QR code so that you can go to their site. But if you can't get there, the website is listed on the business card. So I'm gonna insert that here. Wasn't it a beautiful shop? I know I didn't show very much of the quilting. That is because um, the day we went there, we did a caravan of all of us, went down there, shopped for some fabrics, and then went over to the quilt store part that has the um, cross stitch. And the excitement is that they are going to start um, having place for us to stitch. So I did get a few of the things, a few things at the store um, in my video at the very beginning. I did show you my purchases from there, but I'll show you a couple of the things I did pick up. So they do have all kinds of fabrics. Um, 
I just picked up a couple of these little eighth, quarter eighth, no, they're eighth cuts, sorry. And then, um, but some of the other things that I saw that I liked is they had little pin cushions and they had this one, I couldn't help myself, I thought it was super cute. And then I got this one, which is a strawberry pin cushion. It is so pretty in burgundy velvet. I love it. Um, but here is the business card. I will show it to you again in case it was too quick in the video so that you can screenshot this or take a picture of it and check out their website. Um, the owners are Rachel and Roxanne. I got to meet Rachel that day. She's very sweet. Um, she's excited. They have a lot of cross stitch supplies coming in. Um, when we visited, there was a little bit of weak side works, but she said she had a box full of classic color works. She's contacted several um, dyers so that she can get lots of different fabrics in there. And um, our group is going to be visiting on the 22nd, but um, our big SoCal Stitchers group is gonna be visiting on the 29th of this month. And so she's hoping to have lots more supplies in uh, by the time we all come. And then we'll have a place to go and stitch as well. And hopefully we'll be able to do some classes, um, finishing classes, things like that. I'm not really sure what um, Rachel and Roxanne's plans are yet, but I'm looking forward to it. SoCal has not had a stitch store in several years and to have a new place for us to shop and see the um, fibers and fabric in person is such an exciting um, experience for all of us. So if you live in SoCal, I think you should check it out so that you can go down there. And if you um, ever wanna know when we're going, you can um, contact me from my email or find me on Instagram. My information is listed in the description box below. Um, and I'll let you know when I'm gonna be there because I'm very much looking forward to making several trips there. It's about 45 minutes from my house, so that's not too far. The other life update I wanted to talk about really quickly and then I'll get into my stitching is clear the list. So if you're not familiar, teachers put together um, an Amazon wish list for things that they would like to um, have for their classrooms. Some things will be disposable things like papers and pencils and things like that. Other things are things that they can um, use year to year so that more than just one class benefits. Um, I participate, so you can, if you're not interested in donating to my wish list, that is fine, but I will link the Clear Your List website. All you need to do is you can go on there, you can look for the school district, you can look for the city, the state, um, and find a teacher that you're willing to make a donation, and it, and it attaches a link to their Amazon list. You pick out what you would like to donate, you purchase it, and then it gets mailed right to the um, address that is already attached to that wish list. So then the teacher gets the surprise in the mail. I have received four donations already. I had posted it on Instagram, but I hadn't had a floss tube yet to share it. Um, I will post mine below. Most of my things are activities and games. Um, I have a lot of everything else thanks to last year's donor donors. Um, but there's a few more activities that I'd like to present in my classroom and some of the things that were on my list last year. Once I received them, I realized if I wanted to use them in a center group of six children, um, one one of them was not enough because some of them are only two player games some are only for four and usually my groups are a set of six students so i needed more than just one um so if you're willing to donate you can donate to my wish list if you'd like if you would like to find one in your town where you live uh, check out the clear your list linked below in my description box all right, let's get to the stitching. That's the best part. So this time, um, usually I do FFOs. My FFOs are going to be mixed in in one of the activities I've been doing this summer. So you'll get to see them. They're just not segmented out just for FFOs. So what that is, is I participated in the Naptime Stitcher. That's her um, name on Instagram. She set up uh, summer stitches challenge and each day you had to meet the challenge um, with a project so I decided to try to fit in the whips that I have to help 
work through some of those whips. And if I didn't have something that met the um, task, then I purchased uh, more stitching to do or found a freebie on the internet. Um, but it was a lot of fun, so I'm going to share with you what I did. The hashtag, if you want to follow it, is hashtag summer stitches challenge. Um, if you go to that hashtag on Instagram, you can see all the work that so many people have been doing. It has finished, but you could always um, look for some inspiration there. I know that I found a lot. So let's show what I've been doing. All right. <clears throat> so she came up with this little graphic and then each day she posted um, a mini graphic that was for that one day and it gave the clue. So I have gone through and written in what I did and I'm gonna show you. All right, so the first one was schools out, stitch something with letters or words. And in my two day rotation, I have Summer School Lesson One by Brenda Gervais. And let's see if I can pull it out. And I thought, well, that's great because it was on my two day rotation and it fit perfectly in with the goal of stitching letters or words. So here is a picture of what the finished piece will look like. And um, when I took it out, I had everything done except I didn't have the rest, the whole house finished or all the letters. So I went ahead and finished the house and I did all the letters. So really now all I have left is a couple of little um, berries on there. There's a little border thingy that goes up like that. And one more little uh, motif right there. And then I'll finally be finished with this one. I'm stitching it over one on 28 count Lugana. So it's coming along nicely. I'm really enjoying this stitch a lot. Um, part of me wishes it went a little faster, but it's so pretty. So why rush something you're enjoying? So that was my letters. I got all the letters in to meet that goal. All right, next up. The next one I did not have. It was pool day, stitch something with water. I had, I did not have anything that had water in it. So I was like, well, what can I do? So I picked this little piece up. It's by, it's the little stitcher. I went to her, I think it's a blog, and I looked at um, her patterns and she had a mermaid freebie pattern that went along with one of her um, patterns that you can purchase on her Etsy shop. And it's really, really tiny, but I thought I could turn it into um, a little, um, pillow to go along with something else I want to stitch this summer. So until I get that stitched, I'm not fin fully finishing it. And so I stitched it on 32 count mint Lugana splash. And there she is. Isn't she cute? So there is my water. And I thought that the little white spots really made it look like bubbles in the water. So I will probably finish this as a, um, little mini um, decoration that'll hang down maybe for along with the final piece that I'm doing. I'm going to do a beachy um, design for August. I'll start doing it in August. So this will probably get finished with that. Um, I have I have a really cool finishing piece that I've been uh, that I bought several years ago and I really want to do it but I had to um, find just the right size to fit into it. So I'm gonna tackle that next month. So hopefully I'll get that tackled and I can show you my finished product um, then. All right, so next up, the next challenge was sandcastles. Stitch something with a house or a building. And so this one I worked on my autumn gatherings, let joy in, which is also my two day rotation. And this one I was excited because I'm, I feel like this one's gonna get done pretty quickly. It's going fast. So here is, this was from a friend Stitch um, Autumn Gatherings that they had, um, I think it's been two years now. Um, this was the pattern that we got, the big pattern. Um, and so when I pulled it out, I had the two houses done and the pumpkins along this whole fence line. So I decided to tackle the little crow in the corner. And Friend Stitch is put on by Heart and Hand and Bed Creek. So it's a collaboration pattern. 
by them. Um, and I stitch, I'm stitching this on the called for because when you join it, they send you the whole kit. And when this is 14 count vintage country mocha. And here is my progress. So here it is as a whole. And then this is what I focused for the challenge. I love it so much. So the next time I come, I'll have the heart and then just a couple houses and I'm and a crow and I'm finished. So I'm really excited about that. <clears throat> and it was also a two day rotation. So I was able to tackle two birds with one stone. All right. So then the next one is Catch fireflies. Stitch something with an insect or a jar. So at first I was like, oh my gosh, I don't think I have anything. But then I started thinking, bees were over, butterflies. I had already finished a piece with butterflies and then I thought, do I have anything with bees? And I did find something to fit that. I was working on um, Simple Life. This is a Patreon uh, pattern. Stitch along from Teresa Kogut. And so if you're part of her tier four, whoops, sorry, it keeps dropping. If you're part of her tier four on Patreon, she has a pattern that she's um, releasing in parts for us to do a stitch long. And this is the pattern, it's called Simple Life. She has released parts one, two, three, then she released six because somebody requested that we get the other half of the house. And now that here's five, so four is really all that's left. She just released five. So next month will be the final part. Um, and so if you can see in the pattern, there are a whole bunch of little bees throughout the design. And I hadn't been working on it, so it was a good, it was a good challenge for me to get this out so I can get some more done. So before the challenge, whoops. This is on Overcast by Cedar Linen River, Cedar River Linen, sorry, um, 32 count, or yes, 32 count. And I had all of this done, well, I had all of this done. I added the little bluebird. I added the little um, bee skeps, the turkey, another bee, couple bee skeps, and lots of bees, and I finished the gentleman. So, so now I have parts one and two finished. I'm ready to go on to part three. Um, I'm hoping to get more work on this. I've been trying to, the best part about summer is that you can pretty much pick up and stitch anything you want <laughs> because there's no rules in stitching and you're home and you have more hours than when you're working. And so I've been doing that. I've been getting kind of distracted with holidays and then I had this challenge and then I've been crafting. So anyway, I can get distracted and do all the fun things that I wanna do all year long, but don't have time for, that's what I've been doing. So this was kind of good to participate in because I was still getting stitches in my regular pieces too. So as I come to the newer things, I will show you. All right, so the next one was block party stitch something with a border so i pulled out my sunflower sampler this was a stitch along by fat quarter shop one of their free pattern no purchase patterns it was a mystery stitch along you got a piece of it each week until it was finished this was last year and so here is the pattern and i had been putting this off doing it and so this challenge had me pull it out and I decided to make my goal to get all of the letters finished and I did so really all I have left is the sunflowers around the outside border and then I need to put the big sunflower in the center and I'm stitching this on 32 count sage green Lugana I love this color so much um, in some lightings, it looks kind of gray, but it is a green. And I did change in this. She has you doing the centers in like a gray, and I didn't like that. So I changed mine to a 3371 dark brown. 
because I think that sunflowers centers should be brown or at least the ones that I'm stitching. So I got that done. I'm very excited because I had been slowly moving on that one. And since it's not one of my rotation pieces, it wasn't really getting any work done on it. So this challenge forced me to pull it out and get some stitches in. <clears throat> All right, so then the next one is take a hike, Stick, stitch something with a tree or a plant. So this one, I didn't have something that I could think of. Of course, I could have pulled one of the ones I did before, but I kind of wanted to do something different for each day of the challenge, so I did. So I went online, this is July, so Christmas in July is happening, and I wanted to get some ornaments done. So I looked up, um, I had seen an ornament stitched on um, Instagram by Stitching with the Housewives, and all I knew is that the bottom said Mary, but I couldn't find it. And then, so I went back and searched Mary and stitch with the housewives to see what came up and the finished piece that I had seen previously popped back up and when I read the description it said it was one of the one of the free patterns that they put so if you're not aware when they put out their um, tear trade tidbits and their tidbit to Dawes I think I said that correctly um, when they put those out they put out one a week and then in the the last one of the month, there's usually an extra surprise one in their last one for that month. And this one was that. So I had to hunt for it. Um, the way I found it was I went to Fat Quarter Shop. I looked at Stitching with the Housewives roundabouts um, Christmas. And then when I looked at the description, you can see which one is the one that had the extra pattern because it'll tell you how many pages. So the regular patterns, there's two pages, the cover sheet and the pattern. And then the one that has the extra has three. So that's how I found it. And so I stitched it up on 14 count black Ada and I just FFO'd it yesterday. I also am stitching this one. This was my July Colorado cross stitcher um, piece for um, stitch something that grows and trees grow. So I wanted to make sure that it covered more than one um, prompt. And then what I did is, um, I at Michael's, they have some round wooden um, circles and they come like this, I'm gonna show you. They come like this, you get 16 of them inside and they're called the Make Market Circles. So I'll hold this up for you. Okay, and so what I did was, instead of using sticky board or mat board, I used this as my mounting. I used two pieces, one for the top, and on the, what I did is I covered it with two pieces of batting, then my fabric, cinched it all up. Um, I know that Priscilla put out a tutorial on her website, so if you wanna go check that out to see how to do a round. Um, I did it just like that, and then what I did for the back was I got another piece of the wood and I put one piece of batting and backing fabric and cinched it up and then I put them together. So I glued them together and then I made some cording. Now, I don't know about you, but when people where I live talk about, learn that I'm a cross stitcher, they usually think I'm a needlepoint person or embroiderist, but um, they never know that it's cross stitch. And they get excited and they want to give me um, some embroidery floss that they have. And it's usually a brand that I wouldn't um, necessarily use or it's not hardy, it's not doesn't last, like it might break or um, fray or it's fuzzy. So what I do is I use that for crafts. So I had some and I made cording with it and it was fun. There was one I used white and then I also used there was a variegated, it was like red and black, and I thought that was perfect. So I made cording, then I went around and I put one end of the cording into the little loop of the other end, cinched it up, put two wooden beads, and then I made the bottom be a um, tassel. And then I just added this bow. This was a pre-made bow. I think I picked it up at Hobby Lobby at Christmas time last year, and it came in a package of like 16 or 12. And then I made my finish, I love it so much. And then, so that was that challenge. And then the next challenge was 
bird watching. Stitch something with a bird. And so this one I had to hunt for a pattern too. And since it is July and I wanted to get some more Americana or patriotic patterns completed this year, I pulled from Proud to be an American book by Little Stitch Girl and I wanted to do the eagle. And so I have another FFO. So here it is. I stitched the eagle. This is a light um, a light blue Lugana. <clears throat> I know that in the in the picture, there we go. I wanted you to see that you can see the white on it. it just for some reason the lighting in here is washing it out. And then what I did was um, my friend Sarah, she always tells me what she gets at the dollar store and I tell her and um, that way we don't miss out. Well, she had found these cute little tart pens. They're larger than a regular tart pen there and I checked several different ones in my area and they didn't carry them so she said well I'll just send you a couple so she did and I had put it away and I was waiting for just the right thing to put on it and I'm so happy because the eagle's much bigger than the regular size tart pins at least on this stitch count it is so then I backed it with some um, fabric and then I put some batting on the top I used this little red pom-pom to go all the way around it and then I just added a bow I wanted the bow to look similar to the fireworks and I love this denim blue um, ribbon it has little sparkles in it silver sparkles I bought that at Hobby Lobby if you're looking for it but I'm very happy with how it turned out I love that book I do want to see if I can squeeze in a few more this year um, this month anyways we'll see i have one started um i hope to finish that one but if i can get more done i will all right so that was another ffo so a two for two all right <clears throat> next one was stay in the ac stitch something with snow or a cold theme and it wasn't that that particular day it wasn't hot but it is now and i'm not going out we were lucky last year we had to start our air conditioner um, in, in May, like it was in the hundreds in May. And then it stayed in the hundreds all the way until I think the first week of November it was pretty hot last year. This year we hadn't barely turned it on until just the end of last week. So that's always a blessing. All right, so what I chose was in my two day rotation, I have Snow Village by Country Cottage Needleworks. And I have this one, the center part finished. And I'm stitching it on 32 count blue cornflower. And then I started the snow boutique. These colors are so fun to stitch with. Um, let me show you my progress. I didn't get this boutique finished, but I will the next time I pull it out. Here we go. If you see, they're bright and cheery, and the white really pops on this fabric. And they're so cute. So I finished the stands. The stands are going to hold some skates. I already got one of the sleds. I just need the name and then the top part of the little house. And then this one will be finished. I love it. This piece is so pretty. All right. So, all right. So, my next challenge was fireworks, stitch something patriotic. So, this piece, when I was at StitchCon, I sat with Deborah and Deborah, and then I sat with Deb. They're two, two ladies that I got to meet in StitchCon, but we had been talking in a StitchCon group um, chat on Instagram for the whole year while we were waiting for StitchCon to come. And they, and Mel, Mel who also sat at my table, Mel, Melissa I believe is her name, the three of them were starting this stitch long. And I happened to be at, at on the stitchy bus going to um, keepsakes when I think, I think Deborah picked up the pattern or Melissa, I'm not sure which one, 
But then since both of them had it and then Deb had it, they said, oh, we should have a stitch long. Well, I didn't know. So then when we got home, they Deborah was asking us in our stitch group if all of us wanted to participate in the stitch long they were going to start it a couple of friends from our table and i said oh i would love to but i didn't buy that pattern because i bought an abraham lincoln pattern instead so she said um i said let me see if i can order the pdf and get started well there wasn't a pdf so i had to order the pattern so I got it and then I decided to stitch it in DMC because I didn't have much time <laughs> to get prepped. So that's okay. So I made a working copy of my pattern and this is by Little this is by Little Stitch Girl. Here is the picture of it. Party like it's 1776. And this is so fun. So we've been um, stitching a little each day, each one of us, and we just post our progress. And so Deb got the flag done right away. She sat and got that done. That flag is massive. And then um, I decided, I always start in the bottom left corner. And I had a piece, I had gotten a grab bag from Keepsakes of Fabrics for spending a certain amount of money, you got a free grab bag. So I picked them out. This is 36 count. I don't know what color it is um, because it was in the grab bag, it didn't tell me. So here's my progress. So I started in the bottom left. So I went along and I stitched the first three people and then I went up to the words and then as I moved my Q-snap, every three people, I went back up to the words. So I was trying to add the red as I go. So that's why the, the bottom stripe is finished. Then when I got down to George, um, I did the pull and now I'm working back this way to get the flag done. So I'm almost done. The people are fun. Um, I did have to change the, the colors because the white and the skin color was not showing up on this fabric, but 36 count mystery linen. I love the color and I love the pattern. Um, I'm hoping to have this done I, by tomorrow maybe. And I don't really know how I'm gonna finish it yet. I haven't decided. Um, I know I have to go visit Hobby Lobby because I haven't been. <laughs> do you guys do that? I think I visit it twice a month maybe, unless there's something specific I really need. But. I like to walk around to see what I see, but so I'll do that for this and see if I can find something to finish it. Hopefully I'll finish stitching it tomorrow and can go shopping after that. So that was my patriotic piece. And then the next one was picnic stitch something with grass or food. So I am stitching old glory by little house needleworks. I stitched it for a swap at StitchCon and then um, regretted not stitching two at the same time. So, cause I really, I have a great finish for it and I really wanted to do it. I love the fabric that I stitched it on and I have a piece that I wanna use to finish it on. So this is it, it's by Little House Needleworks, Oh Glory. And I'm using, um, I did, I'm using literally this scrap that was left over from the other one. And um, this one's called Zephyr and it's got some blue into it. So since I didn't have very much left, what I did is I sewed on some fabric strips so that I can hold it in my Q-snap and I got the grass and the flowers completed for that challenge. So you can see there's so far two patriotic pieces in my um, whips right here that I would like to get done this month, um, hopefully by the next video. All right, so then the next one is stargazing. Stitch on dark fabric or with dark floss. And since I had ordered some patterns um, for my um, Christmas, Christmas in July, I decided to do another Housewives um, roundabout. This one is the Mr. and Mrs. by Stitching with the Housewives. And I finished it the same as I did the other one. Um, and what's interesting is I used exact same um, cording and the same colors in that bin, but this time more of the reds, the red and the black came out 
where the last one there was more of the white. So see, I have them both here. I can show you them next to each other. All right, so there's this one and this one. So you can see I used the same, but there's more white on this one than this one. Um, it's just the way it came twisted. So I, when I bought these, I did buy all five for that month. Well, all four for that month and then the bonus. So that gives me five. I'm hoping to get them done. If I don't get them done this month, they will stay on my need to finish um, before Christmas so that I'll have five new ornaments for my tree. All right. So the next challenge I had to meet was summer loving. Stitch something with a heart or with red or pink. So I decided, again, it's Christmas in July. So I wanted to get some more stuff done. So I'm working on Hands on Design O Christmas 3. And so I, Yes, sorry. So I, I I have red in this one. So I had already completed Joy. And I haven't FFO'd it because I want to do them all the same when I get done. So for the challenge, I decided to do another one. And I did Noel. And there's red on the reindeer. And then the little um, Smyrna stitches are here. And the little holly berries up here. So that was my red. So I'm hoping again by the next time you see me that I'll have the third one finished. And I'm also going to stitch, there was another, um, there was another ornament, I'll show you. I was trying to find my project bag that came out in the Jingle Ball booklet of ornaments that Kathy made to go along with these. If you, I bought the kit to complete them and it came with the floss and the floss is color and cotton. Let me show you, here we go. And so I bought the whole kit at Jingle Ball and you get this cute little floss tag and then these are the floss that you use. And if you bought the kit for Old Christmas 3, it would also match the ornament in the Jingle Ball booklet. Let me see if I can get a larger picture for you. Um, I'm getting there, I promise, here it is, okay. So, the only thing that I think is, I think I'm going to replace this word, Noel, with some um, stars. I think I'm just gonna put stars or maybe just single stitches to represent the stars because the um, one I just finished says Noel. So if I'm gonna have them together, I want it to be a little bit different. So I'm probably gonna take off the word and then I'll either put some more um, of these little side decorations that you can see, or like I said, I might just make some um, stitches, sporadic stitches to make stars in the sky. So I will share that with you when I finish it. All right. And then the next challenge, see how fun these challenges are. All right, the next challenge is wildlife. Stitch something with an animal. something with an animal. And I pulled out my Little House Needleworks, Little Miss Sunshine. And she has a little crow at the top of the sunflowers. And so, and there's some crows at the bottom. I haven't gotten to that part yet. So I'm almost finished with the main part. All I have is little Miss Sunshine over here and then there's like a little border here that has a couple of crows on the bottom and some sunflowers. So I was able to get all the sunflowers and the crow finished. So I was excited about that. This one is stitched on 28 count coffee tea 
died by me, Monaco. Sorry, I guess I should have held that up a little bit longer. This is a fun stitch. The white took quite a long time um, to get done, but I did it. All right. So the very last, so there was, this was a two week challenge. The last challenge was in the garden, stitch something with a flower or floral motif. So that I got to do a new start. And this piece, I'm so excited. I um, I found it at the attic when we went on our attic excursion, and um, I saw somebody had stitched it. I had posted it on um, Instagram, and I saw it, and then I was dying to find it, and the attic had it. So this is the green tree, and um, by the carriage house samplings, and. I um, was excited because the piece that went in my spring rotation for the two days, I had finished at StitchCon, so this replaces it. And my flower, so what I did is I stitched this on 28 count Monaco that I dyed aquamarine. And I started the heart and I stitched the navy blue flower. There's a couple more flowers, but I wanted to get at least one flower done since that was the challenge. So I think that'll be beautiful um, when it's done. It's got a lot of golds and blues in it. So I'm excited about that. So that was my summer, summer stitches challenge, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, I wish I could do challenges. A friend of mine, she does um, challenges in ditch different stitching groups that she belongs to. Um, but they count on her to get the stitching done in a certain amount of time to earn things for some adventures that they're doing. And I just don't have the time to do that um, during the school year. Um, so I can't. So having this and just doing one different challenge each day and then I could post when I wanted to, um, that made it very easy for me to be a part of. So it, I hopefully she'll do it again next year. I really much enjoyed it. Maybe she'll do one other times during the year, but make sure you check her out. She also creates papers for, um, for notebooks to keep track of your stitching. So she has that like stitching journals and different pages that you can purchase from her Etsy shop. So check out, out the nap, nap time stitcher. All right, so let me just set these aside for a minute. So I can show you what else I've been doing. All right. So now I have an FFO. I have an FFO that I finished last time. This piece was the um, was the rabbit in my garden by Jarred Purvey, and I have I finished it at StitchCon, and I finally FFO'd it. I bought this frame for $2 at the thrift shop. That never happens to me. Most of the times when I go to look for one, I cannot find one and I, or find one that I like um, the color of because then I have to go paint it, which I don't mind doing. I don't mind doing, that's the best part. You can make it your own. But this, I love this color frame and I thought it fit this pattern perfectly. So this is a Jardin Purvey. I'm so excited. It fits so nicely into the back. And I added my um, finishing label that was on the brag table at StitchCon so that I'll always remember that this was the one that I got to put on the brag table while I was there. So I love it, it's so pretty. Um, I don't plan on changing this out. I just wanna put it out during spring and then I'll put it away. Um, I don't have a lot of room for a lot of framed pieces so this way I can just switch out the pieces throughout the year. So that's that one. And then while I was at the thrift shop, I found a save the stitches. And normally I don't really see any at ours, um, but this one I just thought was so cute. It was at the little, I went to the thrift store and then I went to the antique mall and this was at the antique mall and it was $5 and I just thought it was so cute. So here it is. And the person that stitched it, its name is Melissa, and she stitched it in 2000. So 
I just thought it was so cute. And, and look at it, it's in a little, little mason jar or a jar. So I thought that would be cute to stick in the kitchen. And I just, I thought it was cute. I'm not sure the pattern, who it's by or anything, but I thought it was cute, thought I would save it, rescue it, and put it on display in my home. All right, so that brings me to my regular whips. So I, on my two-day rotation, some of those projects in Summer Stitches were my two-day rotations. Now I'm gonna show you the rest of what I was working on. So first off, I have the sunny side sampler by the drawn thread i know that some people are doing this stitch along for this um i'm not part of the stitch along um officially but i do love it and so i joined in and, and am stitching it as well and i'm stitching it on 14 count waxing moon dyed effect by fabric flare and I've been trying to get on my two-day rotation a house each time completed along with this the border and all of that so this time I got a house and a half but yeah a house and a half so I'll show you all right here we go so I had I finished this one the first round and some of the words and then I finished and some of the letters then I finished this one, the second round, the rest of the words that say um, sunny side of life. And then I stitched this last time I finished up right here. I stitched this building and started this one. I need to go back and add the rest of the words that are right there. Um, the words are a little bit of a challenge because this is 14 count Ada. And so Ada is not necessarily made to do one over one but you can't and so if you take your time you have to have a sharp needle and you can pierce through the Ada to do the one over one which is what I've done let me bring it up close so you can see um, and it still looks beautiful it just it takes a lot of time to do that so that part work goes slow but it comes out just as beautiful as if I did it on linen or Lugana um, this is a lot of fun to stitch. It's really kind of a relaxing piece and, and then making a goal of try to get at least one house done in my two day rotation makes it not seem so overwhelming. And I'm not in any rush. I don't care when I get it done. I'm just glad that I'll be able to get it done. All right, so the next step, inside Halloween 2022 ornament issue for Halloweens. I wanted to do, I've been wanting to do um, in my magazine stitch. I had finished my previous magazine stitch and I had to pick a new one. So I picked Raven Moon. This is it. And do you see how the moon is? I wanted my moon to really pop. So I had to pick a different colored fabric. And the designer of this is Elizabeth Spurlock of Saving Grace, Saving Grace's Fine Needle Arts. I want to give her credit for her beautiful design. Um, and I was able to get the crow and the branch that he's sitting on finished. Um, so the moon will go right here. And this is a 28 count um, Brit dyed Monaco. I dyed it with um, denim blue and violet or purple. And so the modeling when you do this, now um, I did some dyeing and I'm gonna show you my results later in the video, but um, I did some with a Zoom, a Zoom visit with Sarah from Sarah Stitches and we dyed together and we decided that maybe we should do a tutorial on how we've been dyeing our fabrics so that you can get ideas. So look forward to that coming in the future we have to figure out how we're going to do it. We might zoom and videotape that. I'm not really sure how we're gonna do it, but we're gonna try. But when you do the denim blue, what I did is I dyed it denim blue, and then after I dyed it, it had the light spots that you see where the blue is, it's really light. That um, normally, if I was doing a solid color, then I might 
turn my fabric and stick it in there a little bit longer again. But because I knew I was gonna do purple, I poured out the dye and then I um, rinsed off the blue on the fabric until it ran clear and stuck it back in my jar and then I added purple dye to it and um, didn't leave it in very long. And then when I rinsed it out, this is the effect I got. And I just love this fabric so much. Um, I think this is my last piece of it, but I think when I stitch on this again, the moon goes right here. I think it's gonna really pop on this fabric. All right. Now that's not an ornament. It is, you can see it on the cover right here. It was a framed piece, but I just, that pattern is so pretty to me. And I love the raven on it. All right, next up is Strawberry Blossoms. I posted this on my Instagram the other day when I worked on it. She is coming out so pretty. This is Strawberry Blossom by Kathy Barrick. Um, and you can see that it's done with blues, even a couple of the strawberries are blues. Um, her skin is very, very fair. Uh, so I did change that. I'm stitching mine on Serene. This is 14 count Serene. And it's a green, a very light, light, light pale green. Love it so much. And she is, sorry, I have to move my needle or I can't open her up. Um, I switched her to some greens and I changed her skin color so she's a little more colorful. And then I did the strawberries this time. Now these strawberries really pop on here. It's so pretty the way that the red and the green play on together. I just love it so much. I think she's gonna be gorgeous. I can't wait to frame her. Um, you can see I just have her other arm the rest of the heart and then these are all strawberries right here and then the other part of the verse goes over here so i'm about almost halfway i guess but she is so lovely <coughs> excuse me all right next up I've done a lot of stitching as you can see. All right, next up is my hardcover book. Now this one's taking a lot longer because the old way of stitching you used a lot of um, confetti stitching and a lot of back stitching. And so I'm trying to do it as I go along. This one is called Best, Wish Best Wishes. And it's from the Mary Inglebright um, booklet that I have. This is actually the piece I'm stitching. And um, my goal is to make it look like my daughter's because they used to do wishing flowers all the time when they were little. It's their favorite thing to hunt for and pick. And so here I am. I finally got to the end of what will be the length of the design. So I'll be able to go up and over. Um, but it's coming out, it's really very pretty. But each little flower uses four to six colors each. Um, and then I'm trying to backstitch it as I go because um, I don't I don't mind backstitching, but if you wait to the end, then you feel like, ugh, all that work and now I have to backstitch. I don't like to feel like that. So instead of feeling that way, I stitch, I backstitch as I go. If there's French knots, I do that as I go. Now, when I first started stitching, when I did model stitching, their instructions were strict about make sure you backstitch and do French knots and all that stuff at the very end. But I have no problem doing it during, you just have to be careful if you move it on your Q-snap not to put the clamp right on the um, French knot um, where the end of the clip, what I mean is, when the end of the clip would be rubbing on it. Now, if it's inside here, it doesn't hurt it any. I haven't had any problems. It hasn't squished them or anything like that, but um, I like to do them as I go. And then once in a while, occasionally I might have to fix one, but I don't mind. I'd rather do that 
at the end than do them all at the end and feel discouraged that I have spent so much time on it and now I have to spend even more time back stitching and doing French knots. All right, so this one is my last whip and this one, my two day rotation a month ago, it was a waste of time, it really was. Um, have you ever had this happen? You are stitching along and everything's going well and you're so proud of the completion that you did and then the next time you pull out, you realize, oh my gosh, everything I did last time needs to be torn out because it's in the wrong place. That's exactly what happened to me and that's why I didn't share it in my last floss tube because I had to sit, spend the time ripping it all out <laughs> so that I could do it again. So what I'm talking about is Santa Stops Here by Jenna, Brenda Gervais. I'm stitching this along with Sarah Stitches um, and my friend Gina's stitching this too. Gina's the reason I bought this. She went to a Dying to Stitch retreat and Brenda Gervais was there and this was one of the patterns that she showed that she purchased and as soon as I saw it, I had to have it. So what happened was, see the snowman right here? So before I got to the snowman, I had stitched some of the trees, some of the border, and then I had done these trees here and a couple of the snowflakes. So when I came in to, and I had stitched this little tiny tree. So when I came to it last month, I was like, oh, I'm gonna stitch the snowman, make that my goal for this two day rotation. And I stitched him and he came out adorable as can be. And then I said, wow, I wonder what is between him and the candy cane. I might as well stitch the motif that's there. There was nothing there because I had basically stitched him over here by Santa because when I aligned this little tree right here, I used the number of stitches on the tree to stitch it, except instead of this one, I used this one, so my tree was over here. That was so frustrating. When you look at it, you're so proud how cute it came out, and then you realize you have to rip out everything you spent that whole time on. Now my daughter said, Mom, don't tear it out. Just leave it. And I said, yeah, but he's in Santa's spot. She says, so leave Santa off. And I said, no, because the pattern says Santa stops here. And then she said, and I said, so you can have the pattern without Santa. And she said, sure, Santa's inside delivering patterns. No one will ever know. She's so cute. So you could tell that she is one of those stitchers who stitch and go, make do if you can. Um, I, on the other hand, I'm not. So I did rip him out. But I spent one day restitching him. He's so cute. And the second day I worked on Santa. I wanted to have him done. So this is 32 count uh, mint splash and it's Lugana. And I love how the white looks like snow falling. So I'm, I love it so very much. This is such a pretty stitch. Both of the girls that are stitching along with me, they have started on the other side, both of them are working from the top down. And so they both completed the roof and I believe they're both on this section here. Um, so it's fun when you're stitching along with friends and you start at a different space because we can watch how each other completes the um, piece. So that's a lot of fun. All right, so that's what I've been stitching. Um, so that brings me to haul. I don't have a ton of haul, just a little bit. Um, I needed to buy some fabric. So I wanted to do the blue, the blue gingham that um, you can buy at Fat Quarter Shop. And I didn't wanna just buy fabric. So I got, they had a daily deal that day, uh, daily special. And it was for this one, it's called Liberty Typography by Sandra Workman and of Mountain Pine Mountain Designs. And I thought, oh, that's cute. I'll go ahead and get it. So since I was ordering fabric anyways, this was the flash daily flash sale. And I only played a couple dollars for it. And I said, I'll just get it and put it in my stash for next year. And so I got that. And then when I was at Grand Country Quilts, I did, they had, um, they had several designers already. They had um, the Primitive Hair, they had uh, Plum Street, Teresa Coget, Stitching with the Housewives, 
um, Luminous Fiber Fiber Arts. I'm trying to think if there's any that I missed. I'm sure there was. If you watched the video earlier, you saw um, she's getting more in. But I took a, I, I, there had been some Plum Street that I've been wanting to order and I just had it. So since I could support a shop, I went ahead and got them while I was there. So I got Penny Spring. I think this one's pretty. And then I got this happy morning. I want to stitch the one on dark fabric, but this one's pretty too. Like, can you imagine if you could take the time and do both of them? They're so pretty, but I definitely want to do the one at night. And then I got this one, Summer Hill. I hadn't seen this one before. And I think she's so cute. I won't get it done this year, but I'll put it in my stash for next year. There's always more time more time in the future to stitch. So I got in those three patterns while I was there. And then I got, I did an order online. Um, and I got, cause the, I can't help myself. I love hands-on design patterns. And she came out with a vintage stitch, two hexes. I love this so much. Um, I really want to do both just like this. I want to learn that technique. Um, hopefully it's not too challenging, but Kathy is wonderful um, with giving both pictorials or video tutorials um, so much so that there might be a bunch of steps, but every single step helps you feel like you can complete anything. She's so good with her directions. And then I got her, um, the Berry Basket is a new series she came out with, and this one's Strawberry. It's her first one in the series. Like it's so cute. I can't wait to see what other um, strawberries she comes out with. And then this one, I thought I had it and I didn't. So I went ahead and got it. It's called Grace of a Flower. When I went to her class, she had it there and I didn't buy it because I assumed I already had it, but I assumed wrong. So I went ahead and got it while I was buying her other patterns. And then finally, um, later in my channel, I have done, I've completed a lot of crafting as well. So um, I had seen on, I think it was Holly Jones, she had received a swap that came from this pattern. It's called Summertime. And she got a swap that had Sweet Slice of Summer with the watermelons. And they made just this section a little pillow. And I made some fabric watermelons. I'll show you in a little while. And I thought that needs to go in a basket with my watermelons. So thank you, Holly, for sharing it on your channel because now I ordered it and I'm going to stitch it. I also want to make some lemons and I want to take the lemons here, this lemonade, and probably the little strawberry lemonade and maybe even the strawberries with the lemon here and put all those together and make a little pillow for that too. Um, this is great for picking pieces out and rearranging them so that you have pillows or stitch the whole thing. I might do both. But at least this year, I'm definitely going to work on this section here. So I had to have that one too. And that one I ordered, not just for the watermelons, but I needed some floss I ran out of. And I can't just order floss and not something else. Not when you pay shipping. All right. So that is on my cross stitching, but I do have some crafting I've been doing. I have been making some sewing projects, some crafting projects. I did some dyeing. Um, so I'm going to share those things with you. So if you're not interested, um, I hope that you'll come back and see me again. Please like and subscribe my channel. I would like to move my subscribership up if I can. Um, I'm hoping to add a few more segments in the future. But if you're not interested in crafting, I understand. And I will see you next time. If you are, let's get started. So I have been crafting away. So the one thing that I made that I had watched a video... Sarah and I send videos to each other of things that we are interested in doing. And she sent this one that had 4th of July finishes. And on a Tuesday, I haven't done Tuesday crafting in a while, but on a Tuesday I had done a crafting Zoom and we made different 4th of July things. But I forgot to buy cherries when I bought my materials. So I couldn't make one of the projects that I wanted to. So I last time I went to Hobby Lobby, I picked them up and look at, I made a cherry pie. Isn't it so cute? to sit out with my 4th of July. 
So let's bring it up close. So it's this little ribbon and I got it, it's like burlap, but I got this ribbon at the dollar store. And then this is a little tip pie pan. These pie pans are little tart pans you can get at Hobby Lobby in their cake decorating. I glued two together because I wanted to be a little bit firm. And then the cherries you can buy in the, um, at Hobby Lobby where their flowers and fruits and vegetables are. And I bought a package of cherries and they're cute. They come in a little, with a little um, piece of um, stems where it has two stems and two cherries, kind of like you see on prints of fabric. So you just pluck them off like you would if you would eat a cherry and then I just hot glued them in. So this came out I actually finished this one yesterday because Sarah was like, did it work? we didn't do our pie yet. And I said, well, I have my stuff now. So I did. She will probably show her. She made some with lattice topping. She didn't make cherry pie. She made some other flavors. But this was really fast and really fun to make. And I think it looks so cute in my decor. So that was something that I did. Then, as I said, I was doing watermelons. So I started out... She had shown me a tutorial, and this was the first one that I made. And um, and then I had to stop making them because I was doing it late at night, and I couldn't tell in my grandmother's button bin, I couldn't tell if the buttons were black or navy blue because she had both in there. So I put it aside to come back to and work on later. And then I did. So I've got this one. It's so cute. I didn't put buttons on the back, but I did. Um, the instructions did not have you put the red on the back, but I figured if it was sitting in a bin and someone saw the top, it needed to be red also. So I went ahead and did it on both sides. This was a really easy tutorial as well. You can look up fabric watermelons to get the video tutorial um, from YouTube. If I remember, I'll put, the I'll put it in my description box below for you to do it. Um, and then here's another one. And then I got, I wanted to do some little teeny ones. And this one is some fabric that I got at Grand Country Quilts, so I couldn't show you it because I used it. Um, this is one of the eighths. I got an eighth of this pink, and I got an eighth of this green gingham. And I just think she's so cute. She has five buttons, but two of them are covered by the bow. She, she's so cute. I love that you could go to this quilt shop and get a little tiny piece, especially if you're cross stitch finishing, um, you don't need a lot. So they have them and they're like $1.25. It's not expensive at all. And you can pick a few little bundles of, and that's what I did. And here's my baby one. Isn't it cute? So next month I plan on putting out watermelons and lemons and all of that stuff. So I'm gonna put that in my decor next month. So I wanted to get those finished. So then we moved on and we made some, we made some sunflowers, some fabric sunflowers. So they come, you put them on a dowel, you tint the dowel. I did mine with some waxing, um, some waxing, antique waxing, sorry. Um, and I just rubbed it on there and let it dry. And then we made these little sunflower pillows. Um, and I did it two different fabrics, one on the front and one on the back. I had five different prints that I had purchased and only I could only find two browns. I don't know. I guess I didn't have any of the fabric in my collection because these are not typical colors that I sew with. But so I made this one. And so you can see this one was the front and there's the back. And then this was the backing fabric. So I just did that on all of them, so no matter where you were looking. And what I did is I ended up making a bouquet. Let's see, let me straighten it out a little bit. And I think it's so cute. All right, here it is. So that I can put it on the table. Um, I know they make some, there's a stiffening spray you can put on your fabric so that it stands up. I may go and get some of that. Um, right now we have all the fans and the air conditioning going, so it kept blowing them back and forth. Um, but I do think I'm gonna get some of that spray. And you spray the fabric and you let it sit, and then after it's completely dry, it'll be stiff. So then my sunflowers could stand, my petals will stand straight up the whole time. So this will be something that I'll put in my display in September, but it was fun making them. Um, when Sarah and I were making them, 
we decided to make some littles to make for both bowl, bowl fillers. And so I made several, let's see. So here we go. These ones are little mini ones and you could stick them in your tear trays or you can put them in your dough bowl. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And I will link this tutorial down below too in case you're interested. And then I was, I decided I was gonna do some dyeing fabrics. So we decided to zoom and I do, I've done dyeing both ways. I've done it in um, a pan like Priscilla does. And then I watched probably three to six different videos on, on jar, ball jar um, dyeing. And I did it that way. And um, I've kind of like changed it around how I do it now because you can put your fabric in for 30 minutes, okay? But um, if you want the color, but you don't want it to be super dark, you can't really leave it in that long because then it, it will saturate the fabric and there's no way of coming lighter as you go. So I was looking to, I had talked to Jade. I'd watched her video. She's from Small Town Needleworks. Her mom, Kim, is a designer. And Jade is too, and they she dyes a lot of fabrics on her own. They just work with whatever they have in their stash, and if they have some white Ada, they just dye it whatever color they want. And Jade's really good at doing it. So I had messaged her. I um, they recently lost a family member, and I I did I wasn't aware of that when I messaged her. I wouldn't have disturbed her, but she was so sweet. And um, I asked her. She had dyed some fabric for a stitch along with Fat Quarter Shops. Their mystery Halloween stitching. And I thought it was so pretty. I had bought some pistachio for that pattern. Um, and I would really like to mimic pistachio because I love that color so much. So Jade had shown a piece on her um, channel and it looks similar to the pistachio. And I said, oh my gosh, what is your recipe? What did you do? So she said she used Truly Green, about a quarter of a cup. And then she said, and a splash of Pearl Gray. And those are both writ dyes. So I was like, okay, and I put it in there. And she said, oh, and just so you know, I always leave my fabric in for two hours. Well, I thought that was surprising, but I didn't want to judge or anything. So I decided, okay, I'll try. I have a bunch of spare fabric that I've picked up here or there, whether it's Monaco or Ada and different counts. Um, and so I did. So first, when I first took it out, it looked like this, and this is a 18 count um, Ada. And it's like really dark, right? Super dark. So then I thought, oh, maybe I put too much pearl gray. I don't know. So then I did it again on some Monaco. And this is how it came out. Again, very pretty, but um, it was dark. It, but the there was a bunch of white spots. So when I dye, when you crinkle it up, what you do is you grab the center like this and you twist and then you shove it down into the jar, okay? You push it all the way down, you fill the water all the way up above it and you add your color to it. Now you can add the color before you add the water, but once you're finished adding the color, you fill the water to the top so it's covering the fabric. Well, I did that and these all these lighter spots were white when it was done, which is normal because sometimes I add a second color afterwards to fill in those whites. So since it came out so dark, I said, what can I do to make it a little bit lighter? Because as you can see, this one, super dark. Okay, almost looks black. So I added some um, aquamarine and I put it in there and then this is how it came out. So I do love this piece. I'm not sure what I'll stitch on. I think it would be fun to do like a Christmas stitching in white on this. I think that would be super pretty. Um, I know that Joan Elliott has a winter, um, she has a winter piece and it's one color for the floss. So I think she has it stitched in black floss. I think it's on a blue fabric. So I could stitch that on this and do white. And I think that would look really pretty. So I'll put this one away. I'm not, I, it's not a waste. Worst case scenario with your dyeing is if it comes out too dark and you don't like it, you can always dye it black. 
and I do a lot of black stitching, so I wasn't worried if I made that mistake. But the day Sarah and I did it, I had purchased wine is a dye color at uh, wine, petal pink because I wanted to play with some pinks, and then um, and then I just got my fabrics out. Now a friend of mine had given me, I think she had originally bought a bolt of Ada, like at the beginning of her stitching, and it was white, and she had given me the leftover. So I just cut pieces because I thought I'm playing, I'm being a scientist. If it doesn't turn out, it doesn't hurt me any because I didn't spend any money other than the dye. So I did the wine, I didn't leave it, I went back to what I normally do and only left it in for 30 minutes. And this is the piece, this is the color that I got for wine right here. Isn't it pretty? So I love it. I love this so much. I can't wait to stitch something on it. So it's very pretty. Um, and it's a softer, like a pinky red. Now, I think if I left it in longer, you could probably add a gray to it, charcoal, and then you would have charcoal spots in here too, but I just wanted straight wine, so I didn't add any other colors. And then this one, I did petal pink. Now, they were all out of petal pink. I always buy the liquid, and they were out of the liquid, but I really wanted to do some pinks, and I don't like to use the powders, and I'll show you why, but I did petal pink, and then I did um, tan afterwards. And this is what I got. So you can see it comes out different throughout your piece. You just have to pick what you want. And I think it's a little bit more brown than I like, but I can always go back and put it in petal pink some more, and I probably will. But the reason why I don't like the powder is you have to really mix the powder so well in super, super hot water and make sure it really um, broke up because if you don't, it'll show up little red spots. And that has happened before. I don't mind it so much because you can stitch over it or stitch around it. Like this on the edge, I don't really care. I can make sure that I stitch below. I do like the way this looks right here. Um, so I do like this one a lot. And then I got, then I just did petal pink and this one I did petal pink and sunrise orange. And I'm not an orange fan, but I love how this one came out. So let me show you. Isn't it pretty? I just think it's so pretty. And like I said, wherever you turn your fabric, it's gonna look different all the way around it. Um, I like this corner a lot. This is one of my favorite parts of it. So I have that piece. And then I, I talked with Sarah over about how the green didn't turn out. So then we decided, well, since I do 30 minutes, let's try 30 minutes. So I did truly green and pearl gray and look at how it turned out. It is exactly how I wanted it to be. And all I did was I put, I put the um, fabric in the truly green with a little bit of the pearl gray, just like she said, but I only left it in 30 minutes. And so I stood there and watched it. And when the fabric looked like it was getting dark, then I said, okay, I'm done. And I rinsed it out right away and hung it out to dry. And um, so it probably only sat in the dye maybe 15 minutes, probably more like 10 minutes. And now it's perfect. It's just the way I want it. I love this color so much. I will definitely be making more. This one is on a piece of 20 count, so I had, should have a lot of that. And then I played with some other colors. So I took denim blue, I did denim blue first, and then I added wine to see what would happen. And here is what I got. Uh, it's not pretty. This one reminds me of like, if you're gonna do something in the galaxy, it's so pretty. Now there's a big pinky part if you just want pink, but it was fun to play with. And I think like if you cut out just a little piece and have a little bit of each color, that would make a beautiful piece as well to stitch on. And then I needed more denim blue because I ran out. And so this one's just denim blue, straight denim blue. It's a very pretty color. Um, I use it a lot and so, and it, Monaco's getting hard for me to find. So if you guys have a place of finding just regular white Monaco, um, 
I would like to look for some. I know that Fat Quarter Shop carries it. I'm trying to find it locally so I could just go and get it and not have to pay shipping on it. But if I can't find it at Hobby Lobby anymore, I may have to get it at Fat Quarter Shop. But that was my dine experience. That was a lot of fun. And then I have one more thing that I did. That I did. I decided to try quilting by myself. Um, and if you belong to, if you subscribe to Primrose Cottage, they have a quilt. They have a quilt and a cross stitch newsletter. I belonged to the cross stitch and didn't know that there was a quilt one until a friend of mine mentioned it to me. And so I went and subscribed and every month they send you a free quilt pattern in the, in the newsletter. And so they had sent this one out, it's called This and That. And I thought it was so cute. This is little, small, it's only 26 by 17. It's just a little table mat. But I was like, oh, I wonder if they did this with little mini charms, which are two and a half inch squares. So then I thought, I wonder if you could do it with five inch squares. I wonder what you would get. So instead of following the pattern the way it's supposed to be, when I'm learning, no, I have to be difficult and try something challenging. So I did. And I started and I put five, I got five inch, fat, well, I got all the Americana fabric because I wanted to be Americana that I had, fabrics that I had. And you can see here some here in um, my flag quilt that I made a couple of years ago with a friend. And I pulled all of those out and I made, I did five inch squares and I made a huge quilt. It's really big. Um, I did put it in my opener so you could see it full length, but here is just a little piece of it. And so what I did was one, I just kept adding squares. And I was asking a friend during the time, like how many across do you think I need to have? Um, and how many down? And the idea was, I'm always cold. I'm very, very anemic. I've been that way since birth and I can't tolerate iron. It, it My stomach cannot handle it. So other than getting iron fusions, that only lasts three days. So I would have to get once, one once a week in order for it to make a difference in my life, um, which I don't have time to sit and get iron infusions. They take three to four hours each time. And I just don't have the time to do that. Um, maybe when I retire, I can do it. But for now, I can't. So I'm always anemic, which makes me extremely cold. So I wanted a quilt that I could put on my, um, on me when I'm sitting on the couch. Well, it got bigger and bigger. And so the pattern calls for this other border right here and then the binding. Now I haven't, I haven't done the binding because I need to buy backing fabric and have it sent to the long arm quilter. But because it got large, I stopped here. So then after I did that, I said, you know what? I still have fabric left. Why don't I go ahead and follow the pattern and use the same and make a matching table mat? So I did. This time I have the border. So here it is. You would think I would have done this first, but nope. Here it is. Isn't it cute? I love it. I love, love it. Now it will be up on my display for this year and that's okay because ultimately I would like to learn how to make, make a quilt and try to make it tailored per the month so that I can switch it out with my decor. Um, but that's what I'm gonna do from now on. I'm gonna just try it and try it and see what happens. So they came out beautiful. I'm really proud of myself. Um, I've started another one uh, from the recent freebie that they sent out. Um, and this time, I'm, no, it's not from theirs. I'm sorry, I'm starting one from Fat Quarter Shop. They have a bunch of free quilts and tutorials and so I'm doing one by them. And, um, and this one you have to cut you have to use a charm pack and cut them into four so that you have four charm packs, four pieces. I don't know. I don't know what the jargon is. I'm learning, um, but I'm working on it. I just started it yesterday, so hopefully I'll have some more progress by the next time. But I do appreciate that you've stayed here to see what I've been up to. I know it's a lot. Um, I hope you are doing well. I hope you have a wonderful 4th of, 4th of July and I hope that you're enjoying your summer, staying cool, staying hydrated. We all need to do that. Watch out for your pets. If it's a hot where you live, bring them in. And make sure that if you are going to take them for a walk on a sunny hot day, that you can walk outside barefoot. It doesn't hurt you because if it does, it'll burn your paws, your 
pet's paws and you don't want to do that that's very sad um, so check it first with your own feet if you can walk on it then your pot your pet can if you can't walk on it then it's too hot to put them on I know there's booties out there my dog won't keep them on but um, just so you know also keep them hydrated lots of water for your, your indoor pets as well my cats drink a lot more during the hot season so I hope you have a wonderful week I'll be back soon with some more finishes um, until then, please be confident, be courageous, be creative, and be kind. Bye.